Entimab is a bispecific monoclonal antibody that targets both EGFR and MET and has immune cell directing activity. It's currently approved for patients with advanced EGFR exon 20 insertion mutant lung cancer, either first line in combination with chemotherapy or second line after chemotherapy uh, on its own. In ESMO in October, we saw data from the Mariposa study where amivantamab plus lazertinib using the intravenous formulation of amivantamab, which is currently approved, uh, improved outcomes compared to osimertinib in the first line setting in patients with advanced EGFR mutant lung cancer with the more common sensitizing mutations. So this really presented an opportunity where we could improve the tolerability and reduce administration time by testing a subcutaneous formulation of amivantamab. So Paloma 3 was des designed as a registrational phase three randomized control trial to demonstrate the non-inferiority of the pharmacokinetics, efficacy and safety of subcutaneous compared to intravenous amivantamab in combination with oral lazertinib in patients with EGFR mutant lung cancer after their disease had progressed on osimertinib and chemotherapy. So in the study, we enrolled 418 patients, they were randomized, and they helped us establish that the subcutaneous formulation of amivantamab is non-inferior to intravenous amivantamab when combined with lazertinib, both in terms of pharmacokinetic parameters, but also in terms of clinical outcomes. Response data were very similar, 30 and 33% response rate with subcutaneous and intravenous lazertinib. Median progression-free survival was a little bit longer with the subcutaneous version, just over six months, compared to just over four months with the intravenous. And the duration of response, interestingly, was significantly longer when we used the subcutaneous version, just over 11 months or 11.2 months, compared to 7.1 months. What was also interesting in the Paloma 3 study was that our patients that received subcutaneous amivantamab and lazertinib lived significantly longer than our patients that received intravenous amivantamab and lazertinib with a hazard of 0.62. In terms of side effects and administration, we found that giving amivantamab subcutaneously was associated with a significantly lower rate of infusion-related reactions, which were also less severe, 13% compared to 66% with the intravenous formulation. And patients also had fewer venous thromboembolic events, 9% compared to 14%. And just to note, we did use prophylactic anticoagulation safely for throughout this study, and it really did help reduce the rate and severity of uh, venous thromboembolic events. When we looked at administration, that was also significantly shorter, 4.8 minutes using subcutaneous amivantamab compared to just over five hours using the intravenous formulation. So how does this change practice or inform practice for clinicians? Subcutaneous amivantamab with lazertinib is non-inferior to the combination using intravenous ami with lazertinib and has an improved safety profile and greater convenience. This is really an advance both for patients and providers. So as we continue to improve outcomes in patients using amivantamab combinations, we can also decrease their treatment burden and side effects. We were also able to prospectively evaluate the impact of prophylactic anticoagulation in this study and found that this really did significantly decrease the risk of venous thromboembolic events, and we could also do it safely.